and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. This is part two of restoring Will's 150 pound Fairbanks power hammer. Let's thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Get yourself two months of Skillshare premium for free by clicking my link in the description, but act fast because it's only valid for the first thousand people. Let's jump into this video. Well, where we ended the last episode, Will had the pitman in the vise and he just broke it loose because it was stuck. And then we found out why it was stuck, which is because this pitman right here was a remake and the shaft of it is too small, which means after getting it unstuck, you can't get it tightened down again, which is very important because that's how the whole power hammer works. So you gotta make a brand new one of these? Yes. While Will was working on freeing that up yesterday, I was working on remaking the toggle links. I forged two of them. One of them is most likely gonna be scrap. The other one could be as well. I'm just trying to work out what on earth I've gotta do. So I've come up with a course of action for this. I'm gonna heat it up and I'm gonna see if I can upset the middle section to shorten it down. And right now Will is on the phone with the steel supplier. He is gonna go buy a big chunk of four inch round, a bit of two inch round, because he's gotta remake this whole thing. Okay, I am happy with these bad boys. We're gonna let them cool down in front of the forge and then it's gonna be on to some machining. What do you have going on? I am about to embark on but it's potentially gonna be the most difficult piece of machining I've ever done. Ah. I've never actually taken raw forged stock and had to make something accurate from a forging that I made. Certainly not as accurate as this. So Will, you got back from the steel supply. Can you show us what you got? Yes. So I got a piece of four inch round and a piece of two inch round and that is going to become our new Pitman. Okay, so we faced off this side. We got our inside widths correct. I put a ball end mill in there, but that was a bad idea. I can't use a ball end mill because we've got to be building ourselves reference points to build this whole thing. So what I have now is I have a one, two, three block in here. I have a stop in my vise. And then here I have an indicator. And by dropping the indicator down, I can check for how square we are in relation to the reference point we made in our earlier operation. So that reads 25, that reads less at 20. That means I need to bring this end down and rotate it this way. Why don't we go and have a look at what Will's been doing. done is we created a single point thread on the end that we'll be able to thread into the big eccentric pivot. With Will making great progress on the lathe, it's back to the milling machine to square up the toggle link for me. So now, with our faces parallel, true, beautiful, to size, we are gonna get this locked in the vise, then we're going to center drill the correct hole center and work our way up to being able to drill a hole this big because we need to get this behemoth of a reamer in there. So we've got, we've got a lot of drilling to do. We're gonna open up a big hole and we gotta make it precise because 
these holes here are gonna be getting bronze bushings. So let's drill some holes. Okie dokie, center drill, three eighths drill, and then now on this about five eighths of an inch drill, that's our pilot hole for the big boy. So let's take our collet out. This is not technically a collet. So on big chunky drills like this, instead of just relying on the friction of a collet or a Jacob's chuck, the forces are so large that they rely on this tabbed end, and then of course also the friction of this taper here. This big boy is a Morse Taper 3, and that's what we've got to put in the mill. It didn't do much cutting. It just kind of went into the hole, which is worrying because if the reamer wasn't cutting This moved around a whole lot made a wider hole than we were anticipating and we might not get the right fit on the bronze bushings. While we're here I'm gonna ream the next hole. Maybe it's different there somehow Okay, it started to cut right there, but where did it cut? Maybe this thing is tapered the whole way down. Okay, it's cutting now cutting now just only right at the bottom interesting proofs gonna be in the pudding Okay, toggle link one is now a functional piece of work. These will get cleaned up because they're very rough right now, and we're gonna round it out and make it look neater, but the holes are in the right place. It's squared up, it's all parallel, it looks neat. The holes are, however, halfway a little bit oversized. We want an interference fit with our bronze bushing. So an interference fit is where the bushing is actually too large for the hole, and you need to either cool down the bushing or heat up the hole or do both for the bushing to fit in. Well, in these directions, the bushing doesn't go in. Oh, in that direction, it doesn't go in. Oh, we're gonna be just fine. It's only one half of one hole that is oversized and allows us to get the bushing in. So it's not even that much of a big deal. How exciting is that? I, I forged this from a bar of round stock and it's a thing that has a, a level of accuracy to it. Cool. How cool, right? All right, you guys remember that piece of four inch round that I bought at the steel supplier? Well, I've got to poke two holes in it, which is gonna be pretty hard because I'm not very good at using the lathe. So I don't know what I'm doing. I found this chuck over here. It kind of fits it, I guess. I need to put a hole in this side and a hole in this side. The hole in this side needs to be off-centered and the hole in this side needs to be centered. I don't know where that leaves us. We're gonna wait for Alec to give us some advice. So after consulting with Alec, I think we're gonna be able to chuck this thing up in the four jaw chuck to bore an off-center eccentric hole in this thing to accept the bronze bushing that we're gonna be putting in there. First thing I need to do is switch out the three jaw chuck for the four jaw chuck. So I already got the jaws moved to a position where I think it's gonna be about right. When I line this up, that hole kinda lines up well with the hole that goes through the chuck, and it looks pretty good when the steel is in here as well. It's about an inch overall off-centered, so that'll put the center of that hole about right here, I think. It just doesn't look like it's gonna, it looks like it's just gonna rip the drill bit out, but it's, I just drew a sharpie mark to make sure that it would actually work, and it will. <laughs> It does, it looks like it's just gonna catch it and just flip the whole thing. <laughs> that looks so terrifying.
Mr. Stelta, here is your first toggle link. Oh my goodness. This thing looks absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Will. I, I appreciate that. I forged this. I forged and it then, and then machined it. That's wild. Oh. It looks great. So I've got to finish up this one. Oh, man. That's going to be probably another little bit of work. Okay. How's your piece going? It's coming along very well. This little tiny boring bar is taking a pretty hefty cut, and it's doing great. I'm it's taking amazing. a really, really slow feed rate with it. How exciting yeah. is it? We get to remake these old parts from scratch. Which is funny, because I thought the hammer was in working condition. So. Well, I think you were told the hammer was in working condition. I don't know if you knew it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. But this is incredible. What a journey. What a huge amount of fun this is. So thank you guys for coming along. Let's, uh, let's thank our sponsor, and we'll see you on part three of Fixing Will's awesome power hammer. Today's video has been sponsored by longtime sponsor Skillshare. They have over 25,000 online video courses in all sorts of subjects imaginable, from illustration to watercolor to business to productivity. They've got you covered. But if you like videos like these and you want to be able to make videos yourself to share the things that you do, the things that you make, maybe sell your product, well, you're going to need to know how to edit videos. And Jamie, our incredible editor, edits these things fantastically using Final Cut Pro, which is a bit of software for Apple computers that we are such a fan of. And if you want to learn how to use Final Cut Pro efficiently and effectively so you can produce more videos in a higher quality, please go check out Ali Abdal's Final Cut Pro course. You're gonna really enjoy it, and it's gonna help speed up that editing workflow. But of course, if you're one of the first thousand people to click my link in the description below, you're gonna be getting two months of Skillshare Premium, usually just 10 bucks a month, completely free, so you can watch whatever courses you want in those first two months. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this. See you all soon. Bye-bye.